All right. Well, Simon, of course, we love our questions that come in from all our listeners and viewers. So remember, everybody, realestatetalkshow.ca, call our help desk, 416-366-9090. And there's no such thing as a bad question. And it's free expert advice and not just you and I. I mean, we get some of the best people in the industry here to answer the questions and no exception today. No. In fact, we have one of my favorites. A little bit of a crush, just saying. So we have Brian Baumler here in studio. So welcome. Well, thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Yay. So glad. Because I have to tell you, we've been trying for quite a while. You're a very busy guy. It's been a tough fall. Yeah, <laughs> tough fall, but a good fall because you're still smiling. A great fall. I, I just can't stop. So let's talk about what you're doing. Let's. We're, um, well, geez, we're just wrapping up episode 91 of, of Leave It to Brian, believe it or not. 91? 91. We've <laughs> got uh, between Leave It to Brian, Disaster DIY, the House of Brian series, Handyman, you know, there's 280 episodes in the can in the last seven, eight years. Unbelievable. It's and you're not burnt out. One. Uh, I'm just I'm just getting started. And you're Isn't not aging awesome? or anything. I, you look well, better. Yeah. It's not like I'm going to go bald. <laughs> <laughs> I've already evolved. So well, you're, you're just plateaued. getting better. Yeah, you're, yeah, 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 no, no. There's just there's actually he's still on the up and up, and you're just getting better and better as far as I can. Well, thank you. All right. Well, we get a lot of questions, and mm. uh, boy, oh boy, there there we try and get to every single one of them. And more importantly, instead of listening to Simon and I, of course, uh, give the answers, we want to bring people in like yourselves to be able to give the expert opinion. Perfect. So are you ready for some? I'm ready. All right. Okay. If I don't know the answer, I'll make one up. Yeah. <laughs> but see, I know you don't do that. So you don't do that. <laughs> no, Even I you usually know the answer. Yeah, no, yeah you <laughs> usually do know the answer, don't you? He's okay. going to check with me because I'm yeah. part Italian. Yeah. People always assume, you know. <laughs> okay, well, let me hit you with this one, of course, all right. right? So they're asking about, they're considering again building, mm -hmm. and they're asking your opinion between steel construction and wood. Steel, I'm assuming they're talking like, like a new the bone, bone structure. structure. You got okay, it, something yeah. like that, and wood. Uh, that's a great one. I mean, the, the, the bone structures are very new. Uh, it's, it's actually interesting. I want to learn more about it. I don't know I can, as much we can about hook, it. We can hook you up. You can hook me up. I heard, <laughs> yeah. I heard a rumor. We know some that. people. Yeah. I heard a rumor. No, I, I definitely actually, I tried to get out to an event to have a look at one of their I know homes. we invited you. Couldn't make it. You um, didn't make it. But I've, I've done a little bit of research, but not enough to have a, a real good opinion. My, okay. my opinion at this stage would not, not having that exposure to the steel construction, is if we build a house properly mm. and we build it with renewable and sustainable materials and we build it that it's going to last long enough where we can regrow a thousand times the trees that we use to build it, that's going to be a great home. Now, on the other side, there's a lot of, there's ICF, there's steel construction, mm. there's, there's panels, there's the, in, the insulated panels. There are so many different ways to build. I think what people have to do, and, and a lot of times we get tied up in this quagmire of information, do what makes sense to you. Mm, okay. Do the research, take everybody's answers, mash them all together, put them through your common sense filter, and whatever comes out the bottom, eat it up. So there's not a one size fits all. And no. I, as you said, it depends on your circumstance, where mm -hmm. you're building, what mm -hmm. you're planning on building. Exactly. And then understanding budgetary considerations. But what mm -hmm. I love and most... design and everything oh, else. Oh, for sure. Yeah, design, yeah, because yeah, there can be limitations. But In what a perfect I, world, everybody's got an unlimited budget, yeah. but that's just not the case. <laughs> no way. And what I love is that it's just the responsibility aspect, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's just doing our part yeah. uh, to make sure that something that is built actually will last. Yeah, it doesn't matter how you build it, yeah. just build it properly. So talk to us about the innovation component. I mean, you're at the forefront. You're an advocate for pushing to make sure. I think mm -hmm. Canadian ingenuity is pretty impressive, honestly. I don't yep. think people realize just how we are at the forefront, mm -hmm. not just in terms of design uh, and architecture, but more importantly, from the actual engineering and, and, and just what we're... The products and choices mm. that we as Canadians are coming up with that people are flocking to worldwide. So how proud are you about that? And more importantly, uh, do you think we're doing enough? I, I, that's, a, that's a tough question. I know, that's my question. Because it's, <laughs> it's kind of like the iPhone, you know, every yeah. 15 minutes there's a new one. Yeah. So all of a sudden you think, well, the old one can't be any good. Um, that, that's a tough thing. And we look at houses and we, we tear 100-year-old homes apart in Toronto all the time. You know what? You don't find any mold. Yeah. You don't find them rotten as long as they haven't leaked. Then you look at houses in the 70s and 80s that, that have conventional fiberglass insulation, the, the vapor barrier on one side, and that's fine in the winter. But in the summer, you're cooling that house and you've got all that moist air coming through the wall cavity and condensing on the back of it. So we find them full of mold. Then you've got the spray foamed houses, mm -hmm. very tight, but now you've got to get the HRV. All yeah, kinds no airflow. Yeah, exactly. So I, I don't think we're at that perfect solution yet. We always try new stuff. I get, I get roasted in the emails and, and Twitter and social media, you know, that's not the way to do it. Well, there's 10 ways to do something. Yeah. You've got to do it properly every time. 
Or you, don't do it at all. Or don't do it at yeah. all. Right. Just no, wait. Sure. So it's progress, not perfection. And, you know, and there's no such thing as, we, you know, we figured everything out. It's always yeah. evolving and always changing. Because we're consumers. Because we yeah. are consumers. We right. have that, let's buy it, let's build it, let's do it cheap. And when it's over, we'll dispose of it and we'll build it again. That's the wrong mentality yeah. in construction. Now, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to the Real Estate Talk Show. And we have one of my favorites here. We have Brian Baumler. And we're answering some of your listener questions. And we were just wrapping up talking a little bit about, you know, the ingenuity uh, mm-hmm. in terms of building and design. But I want to just touch upon something you had mentioned about mold. And and Simon knows, I kind of rant about this because I've always warned and said one of the biggest things that we've got to concern ourselves with is mold. Mm-hmm. And I think people don't understand that we are a four season country mm-hmm. and that's a beautiful thing. Yep. But when we have excessive cold and excessive heat, you have what we call moisture buildup. And, and that can we, happen in a week. It can, it, and it, oh, yeah. it can happen in minutes, yeah. you know, literally. So when we're talking about mold and I think our homes are so damn airtight. Mm-hmm. So now we've got this other little epidemic that, you know, we used to breathe a little bit. Well, now they're not breathing. So we mm-hmm. have to have other solutions in, inside to help that happen. So what do we do with the mold issue? I'll tell you what we did in um, our, our first home that Sarah and I built together in Oakville. We, we actually, it's a stick framed home with mm-hmm. wood. We spray foamed it very tight. We put two HRVs in and we put a backup filtration system. Do you want to just explain Um, what an HRV is to our listeners? It's a heat recovery ventilator. Mm -hmm. So it essentially takes the stale air out of the basement, uh, fires it outside, goes through a heat recovery system Mm -hmm. uh, for the new cold air coming in, warms it up a little. You lose a little bit of efficiency using that. I mean, anytime you have an efficiency, you're losing something somewhere else. Um, it's a give and take. Right. But yeah. that stabilizes the air pressure in the home. So you're not, you know, you don't need an elephant to help you open the doors. And when you turn the bathroom fan on, you can still open a window, yeah. that kind of stuff. But it also was connected to a secondary air filtration system. We used an IQ air. It's a hospital grade filtration system. We did an air particulate test and there was, you, you know, most homes you go in, you sit on the couch and you see that giant yes. plume. Yeah. Of dust. Of dust. dust yeah. Not at our house. Almost, almost non-existent, and the kids oh. never got sick, so it was healthy. I mean, we all talk about um, efficiencies, but it has to be healthy. Exactly. There's humans living in this house, so you have to control the moisture content in the air and the humidity. You have to bring in fresh air, and you have to filter it because the air in your home is ten times dirtier than the air outside. Which people do not they realize, Brian. It. They they worry about their bathrooms, you know, mm-hmm. their toilets, their kitchens, because of course the show's talking about the sink is really the dirtiest worry place in the house. Worry about your TV remote. But hello, your TV <laughs> yeah. remote and the air quality. Yeah, that's it's terrible. what people don't realize. It, it's in all the products that we use and we're mm-hmm. spraying, and and if it's not getting out and it's staying in there, I mean, we're just breathing all that crap in. There's a lot of off gassing, and you've got to you you want to exchange that air and you want to filter it on the way in, so that when you're in your castle, you're healthy and you're comfortable. Uh, and there's no mold and, and destruction. Houses that we build now with, with our, I mean, our construction and development mm-hmm. side, um, houses that we build in 10, 15 years when it's time to renovate them, you won't have to go in past the drywall. 